Hello everyone. Today in this lecture we are going to see something about the lubrication systems. That are used in the IC engines. First of all let us understand what does lubrication mean in a broad term. It is nothing but when oil is introduced between surfaces which are having relative motion in between. So in any two surfaces which are having a relative motion in between themselves if an oil is introduced in order to reduce the friction then this is called as lubrication. There are varied purposes for which lubricants may be used. They are maybe to reduce the friction and by extension the wear and tear between the parts having relative motion. Also the lubricants might serve the purpose of cooling the surfaces by carrying away the heat that is generated due to friction. Another one is the function of sealing and adjoining space between the surfaces such as the piston rings and the cylinder liner which might be a prime example of this. Another purpose that the lubricants might serve is that when particulate matter or unwanted impurities accumulate over the surfaces, the lubricants tend to carry away these impurities and thereby clean the surface. Further, when the lubricants are applied in the bearings, they serve the purpose of absorbing the shocks that are generated. Now there are certain properties of lubricants. Some of them are enlisted over here, rest we will discuss. The first one is the viscosity. It is nothing but the ability of the oil by which it will resist the internal deformation. This internal deformation may be caused because of the mechanical stresses and therefore we might call this resistance as the measure of the ability of the film of oil generated to carry a load. This is nothing but the viscosity. Then you have the flash point. What is the flash point? It is nothing but as the lowest temperature for which the lubricant will flash that is it will ignite when a small flame is passed over its surface or over its film. This is nothing but flash point. Then you have fire point. Again it is related with the temperature and it indicates the lowest temperature for which there will be a continuous burning of the lubricant oil. Then you have the cloud point. We can say that when lower temperatures are introduced, the oil might change its form. That is, it might go from liquid form to some other solid type of a state. This is temperature at which this might take place is called as the cloud point. That is, the temperature at which the liquid lubricant might change its form and tend towards a solid state is called as the cloud point. Then you have the pore point which we can see it is the point of an oil or the lowest temperature at which it will pour when cooled under defined conditions. Then you have the oiliness. We can say that it this oiliness is the property which will enable the oil to spread over the surfaces and also to adhere to the surface of the bearing. Then you have Corrosion. It is very easy to understand this property. The lubricant when under use should not corrode the surfaces which are having relative motion in between them and the lubricant is introduced in between. Then another one is the emulsification. We can say that when water is mixed with the lubricant oil, emulsification takes place and the oil might tend to lose its lubricating properties. So this will indicate this emulsification or the number associated with it will indicate the tendency of the oil to emulsify with water. Then you have the physical stability. This indicates at higher and lower temperatures that the oil will maintain its original form and it can be used. Then similarly you have the chemical stability it will indicate that the oil will not react chemically, the lubricant will not react chemically between the relative moving, relatively moving surfaces. Then you have adhesiveness, simple to understand, it will adhere to the surface, adhere to the oil particles with the metal surfaces. 
okay then you have viscosity index it is an arbitrary measure for the change of viscosity with variation in temperature then you have oxidation stability it is the ability of a lubricant to withstand the presence of oxygen okay so these are some of the properties of the lubricant lubricants that are desired now as far as engines are concerned the main parts of the engine that are to be lubricated may be the crankshaft bearings the big end bearings small end or gudgeon pin or piston pin bearings then you have piston rings and the cylinder walls and liners timing gears camshaft and the related bearings valve mechanisms and the relative mechanical members okay so let us go a bit further these are the types of lubricants and additives a basic lubricant will contain a base oil and an additive package as you can see the base oil will comprise about 85 to 93 percent of the total lubricant and the additive package will be somewhere around 7 to 15 percent the different additive packages might include detergent dispersant anti-wear antioxidant amongst others what are the functions a detergent will neutralize acids it will help in cleanliness and supplemental antioxidity dispersant will lead to cleanliness anti-wear prevents mechanical wear in metal to metal contact surfaces antioxidant as the name suggests will prevent thermal degradation of the base oil thereby it will prolong the oil and other additive packages might serve the purpose of resulting in antifoams demulsifiers and corrosion inhibitors we can say that an effective additive system of lubricant balances additives with the application okay let us go on further now classification of the lubricant by viscosity the one way to classify is the sae classification it indicate that is society of automotive engineers now over here you will see some numbers starting from negative minus 35 minus 30 25 20 and so on and also going in the positive the negative numbers are in blue color while the positive numbers are in orange or red colors so the different grades of oil are sae 10W, SAE 20W, SAE 30, SAE 40, SAE 10W 30, 10W 40, 10W 60 and so on. The number to the left of W, it indicates the lowest temperature at which the oil will be usable and number to the right, it will indicate the highest temperature range under which the oil will be used. So if you have a unilateral numbering system, it will indicate that the oil is suitable for being used in cold conditions. And if the number is only on the right side, it will indicate the, that the oil is suitable for being used only under hot conditions. When the numbers are present on both the sides, then it will indicate that the oil has the ability or the lubricant it has the ability to be used along a greater range of temperature okay let us go on a bit further then by performance the performance is given by american petroleum institutes gasoline engine oil okay there are different categories sn sm sl sj sh so on and so forth as is visible in the table the different conditions and the different engines and applications are enlisted in front of their names as you can see some grades of lubricants are currently in use while some of them have become obsolete you can go into the details and very well see what are the different grades of lubricants which are under use and which have become obsolete similarly you have for diesel engine oil different grades of lubricants that is fa fa fa4 ck4 cj4 ci4 ch4 which are currently in use and cg4 cf4 cf2 and cf2 they have become obsolete okay so the applications are again enlisted in front of the each category of lubricant oil then again you have association there's constructors europeans the automobiles okay so again you have a1 b1 this grade of oil it is stable stay in grade oil it is intended for use at extended drain intervals in gasoline engines cars light van 
diesel engines designed to be capable of using low friction low viscosity oil then you have a3 b3 capable of using low friction low viscosity oil with high temperature and high shear rate viscosity then you have a3 b4 it is suitable for applicant applications described above that is under which fall under a3 b3 and a5 b5 so these are different grades of lubricants once again then you have catalyst compatibility oil that is category c c1 c2 c3 and c4 the different types of catalyst compatibility oil which fall under the category c are illustrated over here and we can very well see what are the different grades and how are they to be used then we have category e which fall under the heavy duty diesel engine oil they are e4 e6 e7 and e9 again their individual uses are illustrated over here depend also depending upon the emission norms as prescribed by euro emission norms that is euro 1 2 3 4 5 and so on okay let us go on a bit further now then again classification by performance again you have gf 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 the individual grade of the oil and their usability in applications are shown in the table on the slide we can very well refer and understand let us go on a bit further now again oem that is original equipment manufacturers each manufacturing industry or each automobile industry it has got its own recommended set of lubricant and engine oils for different companies different grades and their nomenclatures are shown over here then these are the different types of packaging as you can see the body which determines the grade of oil is given over here acea and api then you have sae society of automotive engineers which two types of oil are shown over here 5w30 and 15w40 it indicates that the oil has got a wide range of temperature over which it can be used since both the numbers are present on either side of w it indicates that the oil can be used in cold conditions as well as under hot engine operating conditions again different types of oils over here for mobile and general general motors engine oil okay thank you very much